because I do 1,300 crunches and sit-ups four times a week. What's a, 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 a dos? Can you translate for us? Winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Ernie Ellis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Go Track, the podcast about golf and golf adjacent stuff, mostly from Africa. It's Teabag here. This is episode 35, where we talk about the Amdoni Park Golf Club on the south coast of KZN. Uh, this is one of our favorite spots, uh, one of our favorite golf courses as well. And uh, we traveled down there a couple of weeks ago. Um, kind of, it's kind of like our Go Track, actually our inaugural Go Track, uh, kind of off site uh, that we had. Uh, had a really good time. Over a couple of days down there, we played Amdoni and Umkamas golf clubs and yeah, had a nice kind of social evening in between. So we recorded this while we were down there. I yeah, hope you enjoy the episode. Just a reminder, guys, to check out the Wonder Par golf app, the app that earns you rewards on the golf course uh, just for being just for playing golf. Um, I actually got a chance to uh, play with uh, one of the founders of Wonder Par, Duran. I hosted him at uh, Gauri Farm Golf Club last weekend and yeah, really great to spend time with them and just to see how passionate they are about the golf world. And yeah, the app is definitely going to go a long way and is going places globally. So check out the app, really easy to use, don't need to explain much uh, and yeah, watch your wallet grow while you're on the golf course. Over to the episode now. Um, I'm sitting here uh, around a fire. We have a beautiful evening around us, and I have uh, Mr. Hoffman with us. Good evening, Hoff. How are you? I'm really good, T-Bag. I'm really good. Thanks for having me on again. You're welcome. Anytime. JDV, welcome back to the show. What's up? Hoff, give us, just describe our, our setting here. Um, you, you're hosting us here down on the south coast. Uh, maybe describe sort of roughly where we are and, and what we did today. Yeah, so we are down in uh, a place, a beautiful little spot called Elysium Dunes, uh, which is a beautiful small little beach cottage overlooking the ocean. Um, I don't know how good these mics are, T, but we can hear the breaking waves, the breaking waves behind us and the uh, slight breeze. Uh, can, <laughs> that's actually the dolphins. You can literally hear a whale farting. We heard one just now. That's how close we are. But um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a really lack of location for a pod. And following a, a really nice day on the on the golf course at Amdoni Park, a um, little bit more wind earlier today at Amdoni Park than we're experiencing now uh, to make things a little bit tough. But an outrageously epic golf course. Um, my score didn't show it, uh, but my my attitude in that showed that I had an absolutely fantastic day out there. Um, not many points were racked up. But um, no, it was a lacquer day, awesome day. Uh, Jacques won again, uh, which is very frustrating uh, for everyone on the goat track and listening to the goat track who's ever played with Oak. <laughs> but um, but yeah, epic, epic little little day out, T. Thanks, Hoff. Um, I think uh, I think it's important to 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 sort of set the the context of the, of this pod for everyone because this is very much a golf course focused podcast this evening, guys. Um, you've probably heard us talking. Uh, in previous pods around our um, affinity, I think that could be the word, for, for a, a golf course down on the south coast of KZN called Amdoni Park Golf Club. And uh, yeah, we finally found some time to come down here, just the three of us, just kind of dis disconnect from the rest of the world. Um, we had an amazing uh, day out this afternoon. Um, there were some conditions out there. It was a little bit firm and fast. Uh, the greens were a little shiny at the end. There was a bit of wind. Um, and then yeah, I ended up having... Just a beautiful sort of the last six holes, the wind died down, and um, it is just such a. a, a, a I, I was thinking, trying to think about the word now, just before the podcast, um, around how I feel when I drive into Mdoni. And the word that I wrote down here was sanctuary. Um, and I, I said to, to Hoff today, when, when, I, when I arrive at Mdoni, and I, as you come up that, that, that driveway, you know, you, that gravel road, and 
you're going through um, sort of that natural forest and you sort of crest over that hill and you pull up alongside the uh, sixth fairway and you look down, suddenly you get this viewpoint over the golf course and you see the clubhouse and you see the ocean and you just like, it feels like you can like exhale. You know what I mean? It just feels like a, a you're like, oh, this is going to be a good day. Like, I mean, half you and I came off the course today and like, look, let's be honest, neither of us played uh, 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 marquee golf out we there. Were, we were hurt by the golf course. <laughs> it was let's, a tough let's be <laughs> honest. <laughs> our, our, our golf cart was a bit of a tough scene. But, but, but we were like, we had the best day. Like, like I don't know how you can have a, a, a shit day at, at um, Amdoni. So, um, yeah, guys, we're going we're gonna to try and do a bit of a deep dive into Amdoni um, on this podcast. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it over to to JDV because he's he's kind of our um, Dhoni deep dive research man, um, and mole. yeah he's 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 done a lot of homework uh, on the course. Um, he's gonna kind of set the scene around him, Dhoni, give you exactly where it is, the land it lays on, um, all of that, um, and yeah, and then we'll we'll get into sort of some more specifics down the line. JDV, what have you got for us? Shotty, yeah, I think. You know, when you called it a sanctuary, the the thing that stood out for me is I got a, a question from a non-golfer friend, uh, uh, Barry Hoff, uh, ad, uh, advocate Barry Edwards. So he said to me, and, you know, what's your... Shout out, shout out yeah, Basil. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not listening to this, but <laughs> someone doubt, that is, shout I out Basil, doubt please. he's listening to a golf podcast. But he asked me what my three favorite golf courses were. And I think he didn't understand the question and and how nuanced that question was when he asked it because I think he was saying you know what's your favorite golf course and I said Baz you know it's a very different question to saying what's the best golf courses I've played you know what's it's it's a very different question you know that's it's not a Leopard Creek it's you know it's not your Blair Athols or your Sun Cities but in terms of a favorite golf course it's got something special for me you know it's something personal something quirky and Amdoni Park is every single day of the week is is one of my favourite golf courses in South Africa. Um, you know, it's it's sitting somewhere in the in the seventies or eighties, I think, in the hundred uh, the top hundred. But it's it's top three in terms of my favourite golf courses in South Africa, and I and I'll go to battle on that. Um, you know, I remember there was a Golf Digest magazine a while ago that did the top hundred, and you know, a couple of pros and um you know Stuart McLean you know we shout out to him again he's like the, the the god of the top 100 but they were asked to rate their hidden gems and I think two of the guys that were asked put Amdoni in their hidden gems of South Africa and I think again it's a testament to just what a hidden gem Amdoni is I mean it's 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 a bit more established than it was it used to be sort of you used to go through a dirt road to get to it and then you'd like go around the bottom there <laughs> sometimes it would wash away if there was a bit of rain you know, it's uh, it's it's paved. It's nice. There's a bit of a development just before I'm Donny now. I'm Donny Park. Uh, sorry, what's it? I'm Donny Point. But I still maintain that it is a bit of a hidden gem. Um, you've still got to go through the town of of Pennington, through the suburbs of Pennington, down the coast to through the bush, and then like I don't know where it pops this unbelievable gem of a golf course, which is I'm Donny. So, and I think I think on that uh, JDV, I mean. Uh, like you said, a lot of guys in KZN grew up uh, going down the south coast and, and, and specifically playing courses like Amdoni, and I was definitely one of them um, playing for, for many, many years uh, coming to Amdoni. But it, it's so much, like the property itself is so much more than just the golf. Um, and I think it was you that said it today, JDV, some of the trees on the property and, you know, the wildlife and, and everything that goes with it, which I'm sure you'll, you'll tap into now. Um, but it, it the whole the whole property is is unbelievable. I mean, the the views are almost second to none in South Africa from some of the tee boxes. The golf course itself, yes, it's it could be better conditioned. There's no doubt about that. But that's also sort of plays into that quirkiness of 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 being the hidden gem. I, I can't believe it is a hidden gem when you play it and you see it and you stand in that clubhouse and you, and you look at the the views. I mean, <laughs> we had literally whales like jumping out. Uh, crashing <laughs> into the into the ocean while we were hitting tee shots and that I mean it is just unbelievable you know and one one side I, c- I can understand why it's so low in the or so high in the in the, in the top 100 rankings but from a, a heart perspective it just 
does not make sense to me because it is just so epic sort of dr jekyll and hard kind of nans and it's just yeah it's it's uh it, i mean it's in your top three it's by far my my favorite golf course even though it hurt me i think it's a i think it's a great example of uh, a course where uh conditioning does not uh, it almost isn't really that relevant mm. Um, and it, 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 I mean, we spoke about this in the top 100 uh, part JDV around. It's probably found its place, uh, that comfortable place in the top 100. Um, you know, we can't quite remember where it was. I feel like it was in the sort of mid 70s, um, somewhere there. And it's very comfortable there. You know, um, it doesn't need. It, look, of course, um, you know, p- people may, you know, people may come here and, and say, oh, you know, if they if they just, you know, if they just improve these fairways or whatever. Can you imagine where it would be? And like. It doesn't need that, you know. It, it's comfortable in its own skin. And it talks to a part of golf which doesn't rely on um, or, or almost, like, I, I hate to sort of like harp back to like the sort of more historical times, but almost to, to, talks to almost like more of like kind of the roots of golf in some ways where like, you know, you you kind of, you kind of had like slightly like patchy fairways and depending on the season, you know, like, like today, I, it, the, the course is, is probably looking as dry as, as I've probably seen it before, and um, it's like it, it's just like in, it's just in like a different condition. It doesn't need to be in the exact same condition. In perfect grass every time you play it in that. So, um, and the rest of the bones of the course, uh, together with the the, the 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 layout, and as you say, Hoff. I mean, we'll, we'll get into it, but like the 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 sort of the, 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 these dramatic differences between the two nines, um, these incredible ocean views that you get, um, this sort of like almost regal looking clubhouse, which just sits on this like plateau overlooking the sea. Um, but also, yes, it's, a, back, it's a, such a special combination. Laid back KZN South Coast vibe, like yeah. welcomes you in, yeah. uh, not trying too hard. And, and to your point, like they, they don't go above and beyond because then they lose that hidden gem. That's, that's what they think work on i I don't know do they work on anything i'm not sure it just sort of feels like i'm donny just happens it's just there and it works and as you say it could be could be slightly better condition could they cut back sure yeah probably probably grows like wildfire down here um on the coast but it just plays into that and you know the fact that pretty much everything is staked makes makes it easier to play you hunting you know less for golf balls um uh, obviously snakes is a factor um but yeah it just it just works and i mean you know the the word i sort of i get the, the excitement driving into amdoni when you when you crest that little um rise from from the gatehouse and and you you know as you described it earlier but where i feel the best is actually leaving amdoni because you almost like feel like completely fulfilled you know like i freaking shot 108 today and spoiler didn't, alert didn't didn't uh, didn't, <laughs> didn't didn't get didn't get many points but i still felt like like it was such a lacquer day out i mean there's there's really some fairways and and holes in that where you just you spend if you know if you hit two into the bush you spend half the time looking around you know at some of the trees and it's yeah it's incredible so i think the the thing for me is is it's it's penal. It feels penal, but at the same time, it's pretty forgiving. And I, and you mentioned it half now in terms of the staking that they've done on the course, where it's it's not unstaked. There's not much out of bounds on the course. Like most of the time, if you in the shit, it's red staked, and you can drop and you can carry on playing. It's a short course. I mean, off the the whites, and that's the furthest back you can play it. Shout out half. Um, at five thousand. Sorry, I say shout out half because it's he basically played off the black tees that I'm doing today. <laughs> <laughs> so. So today it was uh, playing at 5,600 meters, which I mean is is basically a thousand meters shorter than you know 6,600 what what the blacks are playing off at Cotswold. So so it's a it's a kilometer shorter than you know the championship tees at, at some of those courses. And then if you go go and look at the red tees, and I, and I made a note of this when I played today, I think again you know a lot of people have grown up playing on the south coast on holiday at a course like Amdoni. And if you're learning the game, coming to play at Amdoni is is such a great thing because it's it's reachable, it's doable. You know, I'm looking at some of the the distances on the par threes here from Amdoni. You know, you've got 52 meters, 76 meters, 39 meters, 67 meters. That's off the reds. That's off the reds. And but there's w- still blues, aren't there? 
Correct, yeah. But but what I'm saying is that if you like a lighty learning how to mm. play the game and you go play off the reds, even the red the reds at, at other courses aren't that mm. short. It's 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 trying to invite you to say, you know, come come have a hit, you know, come and enjoy it. And that's I, and it's that's exactly what I did. And obviously it didn't work out for me, but um you <laughs> well, know, well you didn't out, play off the reds today. Shout, shout out um lovers, because we we used to come here with our little tigers where you have like a three wood and a, a seven iron and a pitching wedge and a putter and, and that's exactly it. You know, we played off the reds and it wasn't it wasn't ever a course where you felt like you were gonna get kicked off or, you know, anything like that. It was always it was always welcoming for, for us on holidays and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you know, you're hundred percent right there, JDB. So let's just quickly get into the history and then we'll we'll uh, circle back around to, to where we are. Um, so firstly I think Amdoni was was obviously is administered by the Amdoni Park Trust. It was originally established by a man called uh, Mr. No, actually, Mister. Excuse me. It's Sir Frank Reynolds. Um, yeah, and and uh, I just want to give a, a a big shout out to thank you, Nick Grass, who is a, a, a trustee of the Amdoni Park Trust, um, a, a morning school member at Victoria Country Club, who who uh, gave me the Amdoni Park Trust hundred year book. I knew you'd find a way to bring Victoria Country Club into <laughs> this uh, <laughs> podcast. Um, JDV, I was just going to say. Um, just for, for, for people who are listening maybe who you know who aren't familiar that familiar with, with KZN and the South Coast and that. Um, just sort of set the scene where we are relative to like maybe Durban and then just like the property that, that this incredible course sits on. Yeah, so so it's it's I suppose I mean is Pennington a bit abstract? I mean surely you'd know where Pennington is or, or not. So I suppose it's about a hundred. Not, ca- not everyone grew up in Gaza. Okay, now, so I suppose it's about a hundred k. You know where Brackban is. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a hundred k south of of Durban. Um, it's in between uh, Pennington and it's just north of Port Shepston. Um Yeah, so so it's it's a bit inland. There's a, a, a sugar mill which is on the point, uh, the Cezela sugar mill, which I think is the Alovo sugar mill. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's very much like a, a classic South Coast town. Pennington's a classic South Coast town, a very good golf destination. We will we will obviously discuss a, a, sort of the South Coast generally as a golf destination. I think in a future pod. But yeah, uh, it's Pennington basically hosts two really lacquer golf courses, which is Selborne and Amdoni. Um, but yeah, it was started by Sir uh, Frank Reynolds, the original nine was established in the 20s and i'll tell you exactly when that was if you give me one second yeah do we know which nine it was of the of the current 18 it was the original nine (laughs) (laughs) i i I always knew sir frank you know was going to pull his weight at some point um based on all the other stuff that he did so so there's a there's a place called (laughs) yeah sir frank frank reynolds (laughs) So there's a, a place called Linton Hall, which is just sort of opposite Selborne. If if those of you who know where Selborne is, there, I, I actually didn't realise that Linton Hall is the original big sort of farmhouse here in in um, this area in the, in the Pennington area. Um, and Linton Hall looks absolutely amazing. I mean, if you go and 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 look at it, I I, I didn't even know that it really existed, and and I just I, I knew that that sign was there, but I, I didn't know much about it. So Linton Hall was the original residence of of Sir Frank Reynolds and the Reynolds family, um, and then they sort of bequeathed, I suppose, to the trust um, all of this land on which the Amdoni um, Park was established. Um, they also were also part of the establishment of the tidal pools, actually here in Pennington, as well as the change rooms that were there. Um, and then the original uh, nine holes were first completed in 1921, uh, with the second nine opening in 1928. Um, sorry, 1930. Tw- 1928, my bad, was when they acquired their first motor car. So, so 1921 was was the the first record of play and then 1930 they opened the the back nine so so yeah i mean we it, it's it's been around for over a hundred years as a as a as a golf course yeah it's got some you know it's got some some real bones um i mean if you had to go back i think it's a similar time to when to when dcc was was uh, established um 
DCC was around uh, 1920 or 21 as well. Um, they had their, their centenary three or four years ago. Um, and um, JDV, what was the what was the kind of the, the draw at that stage like for in this area for 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 golf? Um, who was who was here? Who was wanting to play golf? Was it holiday people coming on sort of like holidays from from Durban, or was there like a community here? So, so there was a bit of a, a Pennington community. I mean, there was a obviously a booming sugarcane market that that was was going on, um, but. The it, it pretty much coalesced around Boerter House, which is, if you come into Amdoni, you'll see it on the left. And Boerter House was built by Sir Frank Reynolds uh, for uh, President Boerter at the time, but he actually died before he was able to stay in it. So the construction carried on, and when it was completed, um, President Boerter's uh, wife actually uh, came and stayed in it. So Boerter House was, was the sort of the main attraction at the time in terms of what the Abdoni Park was. And I think the golf course was actually ancillary to Boerter House um, at that stage. But, but certainly, you know, if you, if you look at who was coming to, to stay there, they were coming to stay during the holidays, etc. Um, there wasn't that many, I think, golfers playing at that stage. It was, you know, more of a, I think, what do you, what do you call it? Like a bit of a, a Great Gatsby, you know, Millionaire's Playground, I think, you know, from, from, from what I've gathered. I'm pretty sure also, I mean, for us, it's a chip and a putt to get you now. Um, you know, uh, what is it, 40, 35, 40 minutes from, from Durban. But, I mean, in those days, uh, that famous railway line that runs all the way along the beach in the KZN uh, south coast would have been critical for that. And then you can see the infrastructure there. With that as well. Well, um, I mean, it's a good must point. Must have been quite a trick to, to get out here. Well, it, it's a good point, Hoff. So, so partly, I mean, if you come to Amdoni and you drive in and you'll see on the left, there's that old windmill as, as well as the old building there that looks like it. I mean, when I've broken down. Yes. But I mean, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, okay, that must have housed some grain or something farming related. But the actual, that actual was, was the rail siding which they constructed uh, for the purpose of construction of Boerter House and for the construction of Amdoni Park. And the windmill itself was uh, constructed uh, to, to pump water for, for Amdoni and for the Amdoni Park area. I, uh, just, just a side note, I, <coughs> that particular structure is just... Um, probably 30 meters to the left of the ninth fairway and um i actually wish they had sort of built that into the into the design of that hole uh so jdv just to jump in there um while you while you're going on about linton hall and that just an interesting point is um i'm sure a lot of our avid listeners will, will remember the name Wayne Wessner, uh, who was a, a South African pro and good friend of Ernie Elsa's as well. Um, and uh, yeah, he actually... Twice he twice winner of the South African Open. There we go. Yeah, won the World go. Cup with Ernie in 1996. And uh, yeah, after that, he came and retired down here. And I could be mistaken, but I think he was... Um, he either ran the Linton Hall driving range or he was involved in the Linton Hall driving range or he was involved in setting up a golf estate, um, which I don't think quite got off the ground very close. So, yeah, a little bit of, uh, bit of a, a South African pro nugget for, for Linton Hall, Amdoni Park sort of, sort of area. Well, that makes sense. I know that, that Gary Player also, also played, played here at, at Amdoni uh, a number of times. He had a a big affinity with with Amdoni. Um but I think one one story that stood out to me when I was going through this Amdoni Park book is the seventeenth. What do you do? You remember what that's called? Seventeenth is a strike one. Okay, why do you think it's called that? Uh, because they s- there was a sighting of a, a leopard and they mistook it. One of the groundsmen mistook it for a tiger. That's pretty nuts. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I literally just made that up. Is that yes, true? That's absolutely true. 
<laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure Tiger Woods hasn't been here. So no, yeah. So why, I think it was sort of been? yeah. So that was that was the site where the guys were were camped out there. That was the last time that there was a sighting of a of a of a leopard actually in this area, um, on, and it was then called. I think they they said it was almost an attack, but yeah, that's why it's now called Tiger. I mean, obviously it's not a tiger; it's a leopard. It reminds me of that Monty Python sketch. Have you seen it? The a tiger in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> it must have escaped from the zoo. Carry on, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> no, it's weird because I, I didn't, I didn't actually look at that many of the. I, if, if you had to ask me almost any other hole today, I'm not sure I would be able to name them here. I looked at maybe three, but uh, that it just happened to be the one that I looked at. And I, I, when I looked at it, I thought, gosh, that's pretty odd. Like, I wonder where that name, like. I, I was thinking about it while I was while we were playing the hole actually, and so yeah, that's kind of what I came up with in my head. So there we go. Yeah, so I think maybe just to to carry on with the history between the ninety, obviously during the World War Two, um, very couple of interesting nuggets about um, Doni. It was u- the Buta House was uh, used for offices during that time, which led to the resignation of the uh, caretaker at the time of 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 Buta House, who was used to looking after presidents and and their sort of dignitaries um but the other thing there was a very highly confidential um mission that was planned at Amdoni as as everyone who, anyone who's played Amdoni knows that Amdoni is not just a golf course there's a, a huge amount of sort of conservation area that goes into the valley below Amdoni Park um they do some park runs and the rest of it there. horse riding and horse riding etc mm. um but during World War Two, they they actually used it for uh, training of commandos, and at one stage, I think during the middle of the night, they they towed a car in there and blew it up, etc. So so yeah, that valley in Amdoni was sounds was like used for commando sounds like Hoff's back nine today. <laughs> yeah, very, very similar. I'm sure. Didn't you actually hit a ball out of a car wreck uh, at, at one stage? Probably. I, I felt Highly like lucky. I felt like we were in commando training on that back <laughs> night today at some point. <laughs> well, if anything, it, I felt like it was two guys in the army watching like a Navy SEAL just hit his ball consistently down the fairway all day long, getting all the points from us. But uh, we won't give him too much credit. Yeah, so so going back to Gary Player, I mean, in, in 1980 and 1990, uh, uh, he ran an exciting development, Gary Gary Player. Youth uh, Development Workshop at, at Amdoni Park. Um, a lot of these guys realized that uh, the knowledge that they had of Amdoni Park uh, stood them in good stead as as caddies, that, that they could work in school holidays, and, and some of them actually went on to play a bit more serious golf. So so Gary Player, his hand is ever present in, in these situations. So so there he is in the, in the 80s and 90s at Amdoni Park as well. Cool. That guy gets around there. Uh, um is there any connection? I'm just sorry. I'm I'm jumping in here with with the history, uh, JDV. But the 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 I know it's it's obviously the era. You know, like a hundred years ago, or whatever. From the, the you know the architecture and that. But there is something s- incredibly similar between the 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 Durban Country Club clubhouse and the Doni clubhouse and Boerter House and that. Is there any kind of connection there? Are there any of the similar hands involved? Yeah, I think I've I've said it there off <laughs> off mark, but but I think that was just the the architecture of the time, the Cape Dutch uh, architecture. So I think if you were building something uh, big and fancy, that was the 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 style of architecture that was used. Um, and then just just to say, you you were talking about uh, uh, President Boerter earlier. Obviously, just for for our our listeners who maybe uh, yeah not historically that well informed, we're not talking about Puck Boerter here. <laughs> we're talking about Louis Louis Boerter, who was like the f- the the, ver- the essentially the very first president of of the correct what is yeah. it? Prime, the, the Prime Minister Louis Boerter, his the, wife Annie Boerter. The, the Union, which was like eighteen ninety odd till about he died in what nineteen twenty or nineteen nineteen somewhere around there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, generally, that's the the basic history of of um, Dony Park i mean we can we can get into it uh, a, a bit more if you want but but yeah i mean it's it's it, the greens were were redone during the um 2000s um and they they put in new greens and and sort of redid the, the the course a bit um and i think that's a testament at the moment and i think the one thing that i, I sent you guys was the the, the burning the goat yeah, uh, please. So, so can we can we can we can we get into that? Because there's a, there's a, there's a great little quote here around when when Amdoni felt like it 
it it it matured uh, as a golf course, and they they had like a very they they, they drew the line in the sand, and they had like a very ceremonial act around so what they did there. So after they through this, so between two thousand and two thousand and ten, they they did the upgrade to the course. Um, Frank Jones was greatly assisted in his, in his endeavours to upgrade the Amdoni Golf Course by Mr. Dennis Barker, whose inspiration and vision brought into being the nearby Selborne Golf Course. And uh, actually, Gary Barker, who's I think Dennis's son, was in the pro shop this morning. He plays golf with me at, at Gillett's. Uh, sorry, squash with me at Gillett's. Um, Dennis Barker, in turn, worked closely with the tireless Mr. Don Knight. The greens were leveled and planted with, what's it? Paspalum grass past palum yeah past palum grass and an irrigation system was installed dennis barker tells the story of a burning the goat golf day which was held to celebrate the fact that due to the excellent upgrades undertaken by don knight on the amdoni park golf course it would no longer be referred to as a goat track so there we go absolutely love that the burning the go- goat the, golf the track. original goat track wow the original they burnt the goat it was no longer a goat track no, I know, but I mean, it started off as a absolutely. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's how we're gonna. At, uh, at one day when we finally decide to end this podcast, we're gonna we're gonna burn the we're gonna like burn all of our microphones <laughs> and <laughs> the goat. And I'm <laughs> uh, Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so hear it now. The the very last podcast you, you will ever hear from us will absolutely be on the on the deck of Amdoni. And thereafter, we will throw our microphones into the sea, almost like the the, the lady in, the, in that final scene of Titanic, you know, where she drops that heart of the, the ocean, the, the, the ring, yeah, just bang, like we'll have all the trust conservationists like, don't throw that shit into the ocean, <laughs> yeah, <it's> more plastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love that because uh, I, I I love that tie-in. I love uh, I love that uh, I love that book that you got. I love that tie-in with with a place that uh, it's really cool to hear your guys' stories of playing here when you you guys were young because. I obviously, you know, didn't grow up in KZN, but I remember coming here, um, you know, sort of starting to explore when when I first moved to KZN in like 2008 and starting to explore different golf courses uh, at that stage. Um, used to play a lot of golf with my oldest brother, um, Stuart. Shout out to Stuart, I'm sure he's listening. Um, but uh, yeah, we used to go and play all sorts of different uh, courses and I remember the first time I came, we came to Amdoni together and I remember both of us were like, what is this place? It was just like, it was outrageous. We were like, this is such a little, such a little hidden gem. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really great to hear, to kind of hear your guys, you know, little, I, I feel like everyone I know, like I, I haven't, I've never heard anyone really say a bad word about this place. Um, so super cool to hear those stories. So let me just shout out in terms of the accommodation at, at Amdoni now. So you don't have to be a, a president anymore to, to stay at Boerta House. It is now a very bookable uh, bed and breakfast, which you which you can stay in. Um, they've also got the trustee's cottage, which is, yes, it's difficult to orient yourself. So if you are coming off the, this is the path 313th. So the path 313th, the one that goes uphill, and then you, you play the downhill par 514 so you drive between those holes and you carry on on that road there's a there's actually a cottage in the bush there which is the trustees cottage which you can rent out as well it sleeps 16 people and and what an absolute epic spot to to stay very very reasonable priced and and yeah we we stay there every year at the trustees cottage uh, for the amdoni tour yeah, per- perfect for golf tours it I mean, is if, absolutely if you're looking for luxury the trustees cottage is not for you but if you're looking for like a prime location for a golf tour or a bachelor party <laughs> or something like that, this is the place. I promise well, you. Yeah, it was is, there any specific epic. bachelor party that that you had there? Yeah, our, our, our man in the in the in the GT sitting opposite me here, Mr. JDV, our anchor for the night. He had his his bachelor party there. Um, ruined himself rather than other pe- people ruining him. Uh, it's the worst I've ever seen Jacques play golf, actually, um, which is. Actually, one of the best days of my life on the golf course, uh, watching him play shit. I, w- I was like, no one is going to make Jacques drunk other than Jacques. <laughs> so I basically refeed myself like at night. I mean, by the, the time, I think we were, p- I was playing in the last four ball on Jacques' bachelors. And by the time we got to the, um, what is it, the 16th ladder, the, f- the sort of famous par three, way down the hill. Jacques was waiting there. His, his job was to, to play a shot on that hole with every four ball that came through. By the time we... 
Yeah, so I'm a, uh, sorry, we had a bit of an interruption there. <laughs> but <laughs> Hoff was telling us the story. So, okay, by the time you got to the 16th hole, uh, J- without, you know, going to gory details, JDV was... J- JDV was barely a human. Um, and as a, oh, I don't know if, if, if that picked up or not, but his job was to hit a shot with each four ball. And by the time our four ball came through, we were last. The Oak, he couldn't tee a ball himself you needed someone box. you needed someone to, to tee it up for him um someone that's, had to I mean, put, 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 oh, that, be totally put, expected. Put, put the club in his hands and then pretty much swung himself off his feet went straight from there didn't care that the ball went about a meter went straight to my golf cart sat in my golf cart and just kicked out the whole windscreen of the golf cart <laughs> But then so they, that, didn't, they didn't blacklist you. I didn't see your name. Well, on a, in a, I mean, well, that was behind after, after nine holes, we put him in my car. Yeah, th- and thankfully he slept, he slept for the for the remainder. Of thankfully, the round. Oh, that was the front nine. Yeah, yeah, so we played that nine first. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um. All right. So we've got <laughs> we've got a good picture of the lay of the land. I think, guys, the the I think what what JDV was trying to get across. Yeah, we took a bit of a detour there though. Was. Um, there is some incredible accommodation uh, on on Amdoni. Um You are staying in these, uh, particularly Boerta House. The most, I mean, guys, this was a house literally built for 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 the first president of, of South Africa. Uh, I think it sleeps like twenty two or twenty four people or something. I know I had some friends who came down here a couple of years ago. One of the guys owns a helicopter company. I think he like just landed his helicopter on the on the front lawn of the house like it's fairly regal and there's there's some great space and you literally roll down the hill down a little gravel road down to the clubhouse you're on the you're on the trust farm i mean it, it's 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 just a very special place to come and, and and spend some time and not just for golf um i think there's there's something for for families young families um i know that there's some mountain biking trails throughout the property um, there's some good. I think there's a park run. Uh, yeah, there's a park run. There's also that beer taste. Run, there's that beer um, festival brewery. That, there's a brewery that's also just down the road in Pennington. Yeah. Although I can't uh, uh, vouch for the beer that's there's, there. There's there's horse riding. Um, obviously the golf. Uh, Ma- the re- ma- the, mainly for golf. The, the the restaurant. <laughs> the the restaurant is. Um, it really has. It's. It used to just be like a, a restaurant that you could go to, like any golf course, and now it's 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 really one of the it's best restaurants. And it's uh, like the best, like nineteenth hole in KZN, probably. Yeah, and the views are, are incredible. So it, yeah, it's it's pretty much all round to be yeah. honest, and it's it's a it's a great place to come for a holiday on um, the KZN South Coast. But, but let's let's get to Terence your. Your your holes. My passion. What are your what are your favourite two holes of the front? So uh, before we before we get into that JDV, I just I just want to set the scene a little bit for people who haven't played it at Adam Doney, so they can kind of get get to grips with. We, now we're going to get into the golf side of it, but um, the 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 property runs uh, basically up uh, what 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 I would call like a massive massive dune uh, or, or hill. Um, and then all the way down to probably within like maybe 150 meters of, of the sea, um, even less, maybe 100 meters. So the clubhouse sits right down near the, near the ocean, although you're still fairly raised from the clubhouse. I mean, today there was whales jumping in front of the clubhouse. You have quite a, quite a vantage point um, up uh, uh, from the clubhouse. And then... The so so the way the course is, is rooted is that you have the the front nine which sort of sits on um, very uh, uh, hilly land which runs in fact I mean the, the, the whole course is, is 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 on is on hilly land let's be honest it's there's a, there's a huge amount of elevation change on the course y- you're allowed to walk it I don't know if it's recommended yeah, yeah. look Oaks it's 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 a tough walk I don't I don't think I've ever walked uh, Amdani half have you ever walked Amdani I've I've walked Amdani many 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 times. In fact, the, when, the when front nine and the back nine. The front nine and the back nine. So <laughs> when, when we used to go, we used to have a, a, a beach cottage in Pennington and we only played at Amdoni. Um, this is going back to the 90s. I mean, I don't know if there were golf carts at that stage. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure, but if there were, we certainly didn't take them. So I grew up walking Amdoni, funny yeah. enough. Um, so my, so, my so that's where I've got his cross-country uh, chops. <laughs> That's where those calf muscles built up. So, so anyway, I mean, it's 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 a it's, there's some serious uh, terrain on the course in terms of elevation. 
Um, the front nine sits on a, um, I, w- I would say, maybe marginally flatter part of the uh, of the course. Uh, although that that that's probably you know d- don't don't expect it to be particularly flat. It's, it's more open though. Yeah, and and it sits in in what I would describe as sort of like um, sort of grassland slash maybe like former dune land. Um, but there still are some like massive trees and uh, vegetation in between the holes. And then <clears throat> the way that the, the routing done of the course is actually really, really well though, because you you still come uh, back to the clubhouse uh, after nine holes and then you make your way up uh, through the, the, the 10th, 11th. And by the time you get to the 12th hole, the, the 12th green, you are essentially sitting at the highest points uh, on the course, which would be this massive top of this this ridge which is uh, where the 12th green sits and then you also uh, hit that same ridge when you tee off on the 18th tee box so you 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 climb right up uh, on the 12th hole and then you you tee back down and and from around the uh, the 12th green i would say you you find yourself like completely immersed in this incredible coastal forest um, which basically starts from the 12th tee half where you hit up that par three um, and you hit between a row of trees and from there on on the back nine all the way till the 18th tee box you play through some of the most like gorgeous like coastal bush that 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 you can imagine coastal forest um in kzn um and yet it still feels fairly forgiving you know it, it, it it's because it's, it's short it's it's, it's a short. short course um the fairways are, are are reasonably wide there's a there's a couple of of, of narrow holes the 17th in particular but generally, you know, it, it's 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 reasonably forgiving considering the the, the, the sort of forest that you're playing through. Um, so that's kind of a, a rough layout of the course. The front nine is is very very open. Um, I mean, you can, you can blast it, you can blast it pretty far left and right on quite a few of the holes on the front nine, which Hoff and I did today um, fairly fairly well. And considering we were sharing a golf cart, invariably I was left and and he was right. I think. Uh, JDV can attest to how long it took me and Hoff to play the second hole today. On, I the, think se- it, on the second hole, I think it was about twenty minutes. I was about to say, on the second hole, I felt a bit bad. I was the guy sitting at the green, hands on hips, saying, "If it's going to take us this long to play two holes, we're not going to finish nine holes." It felt like it felt like you were like our dad, <laughs> like you were standing at the second green. <laughs> Half and I had been all the way onto the first fairway. We came all the way back. I cleared <laughs> my inbox of emails. <laughs> yeah, listen, um, it was it was a bit of a journey that hole. But I mean, like you say, that the fact that the the front is so open and the back is this coastal forest is this like i think i said it earlier this like jekyll and hyde kind of scenario where you get absolutely hammered by the wind or you can get hammered by the wind on the front nine and even if it's windy it just gets it's like dead on the back nine and and hot and Mm. as you say the most claustrophobic yeah the most incredible like Mm. coastal forest Mm. compared to the front nine it's it's yeah it's 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 quite a journey actually Mm. Mm. and i i what what i really love about it is that is that on the on the front nine you you get so so when you when you come up the um like to, to the top of the fourth green you you start getting into that forest a little bit so you stand on the fifth tee box and you you know you, you you're there you you're almost up on that ridge on the cusp you're on the cusp and you're like yes look at this forest this is amazing and then you go back down and like back into the grassland almost like feel like back into the safety you know and then you start again on the on the tenth eleventh hole and then it takes you back up and then you go on that proper journey thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen and then eighteen you're like. Phew. Like feel like you can breathe, you know. It's 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 quite a it's it's an amazing uh, 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 routing like that they've done with with the holes, considering like that they sort of come in and out of that clubhouse. Um, I mean, you you earn some proper discovery like vitality points, like if you're walking. If, if you're walking, <laughs> if <that> route, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, JDV, I'm gonna we're gonna we, we're gonna we're gonna round out our, our chat now a little bit, and then we'll have some closing thoughts. Um, so. We sort of challenged ourselves to come up with our with our two best uh, holes from each nine, um, and and a what we thought was you know sort of the, the holes that we one hole that we don't like from each nine um, because we we got to be fair. Um, so I'm going to throw it to you. What are your two best holes on the front nine, Adam? Are you giving me both of my holes? So yeah. are you giving me both of those holes? Straight no, no, no. I, it, we, we're not playing okay. a we're so, not playing so a draw here. Look, if if I agree with you on them, I'm I'm gonna um, leave it at that. You're not taking them off the board, yeah. All yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with nine to start with. 
I think nine is is uh, an epic hole in the sense from a aesthetics point of view. Um, architecture, Terence, I'll leave I'll leave to you. But I mean, the fact that now that I know the history of nine, knowing what the the windmill was, uh, that uh, by the way, that windmill that you see on the left, which is that cone, <laughs> yeah, that old school brick cone that you see. Um, they had put that up to pump water on and then I think within a, couple, a year or even less, uh, the high winds and bad weather had blown all the windmill, what do you call them, fins off. So so, so that that was there and that what I thought was the um, like grain silo or whatever it was for agricultural equipment was actually the rail siding um, was, um, well, yeah, the rail siding is, is, is really nice to know that that's now like historical significance of that so yeah long story short I, I do still really like the ninth it's it's a very tricky tee shot you can't take driver if you blow it right you're going to go into the the shit on the on the right if you go left you ob um you've got a bit of a blind shot i say a bit of a blind shot you you, you can see the flag but it's an uphill shot for your second um right next to the clubhouse um very much sloping uh, back to front green you can get some very tricky putts on there, as I know. It was, I think, the only green on three putts today, but uh, three putts I did. So I'm going to take nine off the board. Okay, no, that's that's cool. Um, so this this can be a nice controversial one for, for JDV here, but I'm going to go with the fourth hole. Um, we, we spoke about this today on the course. Uh, I know JDV doesn't really like this hole because the, the tee shot is kind of... It's probably one of the easier tee shots on the course. Very, very wide fairway. But I really love like the second shot into this hole because it's completely blind. The the green site is uh, one of, I think, honestly, one of probably the top three or four green sites on the whole course. Um, there's a huge big tree that guards the, the, the left-hand side of this green site. Um, and yeah, it's a, you, you, you blind pretty much the whole way in. I mean, half hours probably only what 30 or 40 meters hitting that third or whatever fourth shot into that green and you were still having to show me you know roughly where the pin was so it sits up on this little little like i can't, little flat I can't believe that that's like a good thing <laughs> no i love that i think that's great i think th- there's quite a few holes at Dundee that do that they, yeah. they test you with, with i mean the, the ninth is not too different from that it's but, but you can see the flag from the from mm, the bottom of the it's a back mm, flag not really yeah mm. So so anyway, I think the 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 thing that for, for me is when you're standing on the green site, it's just it's just a stunning green site. It's like, I mean, I took that photo today of you guys playing, and like like that you've got the ocean in the background, and like yeah, like an uphill hole is not necessarily for everyone, but uh, it's it, it's got some interest that 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 hole for me, um, and uh, yeah, it's that that that's my pick. So what's your what's your next one? So so just to the only thing I would push back on is that the green site is cool if that was almost in the opposite direction because you have to look back to to get everything that you're saying. Like if, you, if you're looking into it, if that green site wasn't the way it was uh, projected, which is into the dune, I mean, you, you, you play into it, you don't really see it. And only once you're on the green site do you get to look back and see everything that you are sort of gushing about. <laughs> It's, it's almost like a metaphor for life, JDV. You know, like <laughs> only once you get to the end do you realize do you realize how amazing the journey was. You know, Ma- it's like you have photos of of you finishing comrades <laughs> up on your wall. Like only once you get to the end, you know, like you know, you know what you've achieved. Exactly. Look, my, my memory of holes is not great, but if I have to react and choose a whole lot of those two, I, I, I'm actually quite shocked you chose nine. That's the first thing. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I agree with you, T. I, I, I don't know if it's my favorite hole in the front nine, but it's definitely up there. It's got that beautiful old tree that's kind of like fallen over a little bit to the left of that green, which is also really, really cool. Um, and yeah, I think that, that view looking back is 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 really lacquer. It, and it is a nice tee shot as well. It's nice to get a little bit of a an open base. Yeah, it frees you up. You know, it's it's like, just go ahead. I mean, I, I, I didn't hit driver today because I was like, driver was a tough scene today for me, but... You know, it was, um, yeah, uh, I, I, it, it, it's, it's about the second shot for me that I'll, and listen, it's about that big tree on the left as well, because I've, I've hit, 
if you go down so there's there's some angles on that hole as well if you go down the left hand side of that fairway or if you're on the left rough and the pin is like at the back you can that tree is very much in play um so yeah jdb what is your what is your sec what, what's the next hole on the front line and maybe follow it up with with like the hole you don't like okay so you're gonna think i picked this one because i buried it spoiler alert but i'm gonna go with the third part three over the water uh two-tiered green very two-tiered green um it's a very short hole uh playing 160 meters off the white but yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a i don't know it's a solid hole i mean over water get it on the green two tiers beat uh ocean on the right i don't know golf course on the left <laughs> <laughs> This is it's kind of a hard one for me because I was trying to think of like my, my worst hole on the front nine. And that one definitely came into like into my, the like, worst into hole. my thoughts. Yeah. Really? I think it's in my bottom three on the front nine. I, wow. I prefer the other part three. I was about to say the other part three is okay. my worst ones. Well, that's, that's, that's great. Um, that's, why we <laughs> that's why we have different opinions. So I'm going to go to my, my next, the, the next favorite hole. The sick, I think for me is the sixth hole would be my second choice um so you play up the fourth up to the top of this ridge the fifth is also a, a great hole but then the sixth hole is just like it's just like run free you know it's like you you're heading way back down to the ocean you often have the wind off your left you've got so much space i mean i think all three of us hit it like pretty far right today but uh like you can get down near that green like in the in, in the right wind if you really like hammer a drive um it's just like a like go for it boys like it's a it's a, it's a nice like freedom hole um so that would be my that would be my shot i mean I, i'll i'll take the the soapbox here jdv and so this, this is kind of tough but I, like, it was probably between three holes and it's just something about the second hole that, like, I just like I just don't like. I completely agree with yeah. you. That I was, think it's that my was I think it's my me. worst hole, which is also probably why it took us twenty minutes to 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 finish today. But I don't know. It just doesn't do anything for me. The second hole. Well, well, firstly, it's it's like for a higher handicap, it's a virtually impossible tee shot. <laughs> yeah, it's like tees on the left. It it, it, it just visually it's it pushes super you into that push in the right. Yeah, and then. Everything bounces right to the right into yeah. the shit. You can't and keep a ball. I don't think left, I, you can't keep shit. a ball on the fairway. Yeah. And then if you go at the green, unless you hit the green, it's gonna bounce over it and you're in shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. Uh, I'm with you there. Okay. So, um, Hoff, have you got any any like what's your what's your worst hole on the front line? Well, that's definitely the worst I played on the the, the day. Was that I think my drive was like nine meters. <laughs> <laughs> um, followed up by, I don't. I, don't know, I, th I think the worst you played was probably on the fifth hole, where you hit four whiffs with left-handed. Yeah, but that was because of the thorn tree, and you know <laughs> there were ex extenuating circumstances there. T, like there was no extenuating circumstances on the on this. I almost hit you, Jacques. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, that, that was actually quite a wild shot. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, out of the from that, from that right was underneath the, the, the uh, that was when tree. I had my hands on my hips and I was like, Dad when mode. are these oaks gonna be? Uh, and then. Bang, ball, straight and and I and then I saw it in the bush and I was like, Cough, there's your boy, like fuck it. I, don't I reckon want if it. we if we tracked <laughs> yeah, I took twenty minutes and then didn't flip and actually play the last shot. <laughs> if we tracked our if we tracked our, our kilometers down on that hole, I reckon we almost drove a kilometer like on that well, hole. Well it's definitely the furthest I've driven left playing the second. <laughs> was looking for your ball <laughs> on that hole. It was like, well, if it I don't did, know if it did come through here, yeah, then it's because of the hard fairways, it's probably yeah. run down yeah. the first. So we ended yeah. up like right near the water. <laughs> so so just just my just like my closing thoughts on, on the front nine. So to, just to just to say it, my my worst hole is probably the ninth, which is Jacques' best hole. Like I I don't get anything out of that hole. So it's in my bottom three. It's it's, it's a horrible tee shot for yeah. me so my as two a top, slicer. My, my two top holes were your two bottom holes. <laughs> as, as a slicer, it's a horrible tee shot. Um, the 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 what do you call it? The railway siding doesn't come into play at all for me. And the then, thing is and for then, me and is and that then, and then the shot up to the green that, like that fairway is so steep, so too steep. <sighs> now, now, now when you talk steep. about it, like I, I, I'm second guessing myself. It is a, <laughs> it is a bit of a cut call. <laughs> okay, I'll take it back. So just just my closing thoughts on the front nine, and and uh, it's it's um, it's very exposed. Like we had a proper wind out there today. 
it's very up and down. And and you know what? What like like what I will say about that second hole, and like the interesting thing about the way they did the 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 the, 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 the reaching there is that. You, you play up from the clubhouse from the first hole and you go, okay, cool, I'm up on this ridge. And they could easily have taken you across to like, I don't know, the fourth tee box or whatever, but they don't. <laughs> like they take you straight back down the hill. And so you, it's, it's like it's even the front nine is a proper journey. I mean, you go up that hill like, like twice and then you come down and then you go up again on the par three. It's, it's, it's a real like, like you, you're in and out. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 quite a, it's quite an interesting sort of journey across that property. Um, and the one thing we kind of noted today, sort of, it was actually when we were coming down 18, but, um, they could, and looking at some of the photos in, in, in your book there, Jacques, I think there's no doubt that there's some unbelievable, like big trees across the whole of Mdoni, but there's a lot of vegetation. I think that, that they could clear out of, um, some of the holes on that front line, which would really make that like more sort of like grassland links feel yeah. like pop art i i think and i honestly don't think it's like super hard to to do it, it it's basically removing all of the like the palm type vegetation that's in between all of the holes um and i think it would have a huge huge difference on on that front nine yeah 100 percent. i think the other thing to note just about the front nine is that it's a uh, it's 35 so most of your past 72s are 36 36 so you might get a bit balked by, you know, a bit of a low score, even if you think you played better on the front nine, because it's it's one shot essentially less than what you used to. Um, so yeah, the back nines are par thirty seven, so better get ready to to shoot a little bit higher. So so what you're saying is I actually shot eleven over uh, on the on the front nine today. Correct. <laughs> yeah listen score score was not a score was not a relevant thing today um okay so then uh guys so basically the back nine you 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 tee off i think we spoke about you go up up 10 11 12 and you're suddenly on top uh, of this property and you're into the the forest so jdv hit me with your um i'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it completely over to you for your two best holes and your worst hole and i'll give you mine and then we can uh we can wrap this up Okay, so I know one that no one's going to disagree with, which is 18. Uh, it was part of our top five, par five mm. uh, holes. Hoffman, I mean, you, you are Lati playing the 18th. I mean, what do, you, what do you feel going up there? I think it's a lacquer end to what's usually a good day. And like you were saying earlier, T, it's, it kind of like completes the journey. Mm. So you're going through the 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 forests, um, the coastal forests, and then next thing you like pop out on this tea box. But the tea box is still surrounded by the forest, and you have this like unbelievable window towards the ocean. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's it's definitely one of the one of the best holes on the on the on the back nine. Probably one of the best holes in in KZN. In, in, in KZN yeah. Interestingly, it's 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 plays 502 meters, but I mean it doesn't. I mean that's that's the distance, but it doesn't play that. I mean it's not. If you had a good drive, I mean, I'm not a long hitter, but I can get to the green and two there. Um, it's also a great hole. Like if you've got like a close match going on, because it's oh, not a it's difficult so hole, right? Yeah. It's it's wide open, and once you hit the fairway, there's nothing there's nothing difficult about it. You can get your ball down to the front of the green or whatever, and like so so birdies and eagles are like on the card, but 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 it doubles on the card as well. If you if you miss off the tee, like so, it's a great friendly. Just as as Hoff says, I think it's a great way of describing it. It's like the end of your journey. It's like it's not going to beat, shouldn't beat yeah. you up. Um, it's 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 a it's a it's it's a really nice. It's also something about hitting a driver like off the top of the hill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and like That's awesome, and just and, seeing and it what, float what, over the ocean. You're yeah. basically hitting it into the ocean. Into the ocean, yeah. 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 All right. So what's your what's your second what's your second one? Yo, um, I mean the three par fives on the back nine. I I really. It's a controversial one. I want to go with that other par five, the the thirteenth. But I mean, like you said, can you can you call one a par five that you can't hit driver? T, you go first. I'm gonna give this a bit more thought. So this is this is this is gonna be a control controversial take from me as well. But I'm actually gonna go with the thirteenth. Um, I actually wrote it down. 
And you 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 said it to me today. You're like, oh, this is taking driver out of your out of your hand. Um, and I said to Carl, I said, I, is it the dog leg? Yes, it's a, it's a it's a dog leg. Is right. that the one right. that you, that and, then you hit and it came back at you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I said to so while 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 Carl and I were in the rough there, I said to Carl, I said. I'm actually blaming Jacques for my poor performance on the soul because the hole didn't take driver out of my hand. Jacques took driver out of my hand by, by telling me how the hole takes driver out of your hand before I was even on the tee box. Um, because I hear what you're saying, that the fairway cants a lot to the left, um, but it kind of cants anyway, like regardless of what, what, what club you hit. And I tell you, uh, and I know this goes against you know what I said about, I think I really the key to a good par five is, you know, is, is you want to be able to hit driver and then have that decision-making shot. But standing on that green today, looking back at that hole, I just love the, the characteristics that that hole has because it has, it, it's got so many different facets to it. You have this fairly daunting tee shot, and I agree with you, it's not an automatic driver. But it's, you, a far, it's a far vibe. But you can hit, you, you, could, you could hit driver down there, and I know you're probably going to end up down in, in the left rough, but, but you're going to be... Way you all, you've got to be so exacting with the driver. I mean, if you're hitting a driver, you've got to hit it basically over the tree you've line. Got to, to the right. You've got to hit a, a pretty big like fade, I think, down 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 the tree line to the right and land on the right fairway. Look, it's not it's not an automatic driver. I, I get that, but but there's just it's just an interesting hole. It's got that like the fairway dips down, uh, and you have that sort of like almost like a water course that runs through it. It's fairly wide, so you have some interesting like branches that are hanging over the fairway down the left hand side the green site is like very kind of flat and green. level yeah it's it's i i i really a lot, a lot of tree action there's water there's water to the right there's well. water to the right so yeah it's it's a i i it's not a it was a, it's a bit of a tough choice because there's some really nice holes on that on that back nine um but for me uh standing on that green looking back at that hole today i i, I felt like i had to sort of put it in my top two um JDV, uh, what is what is your have you have you said have you said your second choice yet? No, I haven't. Uh, okay. I've given it some thought. You're still thinking, and this is, I think this might be a little bit of a controversial take. I mean, I think I'm going to go with my second one being the par four fifteenth stroke nine, which is back up the hill before the par three ladder. Okay. For me, that's it's. There's something that has to be said about a dead straight claustrophobic hole like that <laughs> I mean uh, do I you, that do you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can tell it's you I, less I can, give you, I of can give you like five words for it like I do not like, like at it all. at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah straight like dead straight holes like totally freaked me out it, it, it reminds short. me of the was it the fourth or the fifth hole at like Beechwood where you just had like 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 bush on the right bush on the left like maybe a 25 meter wide fairway and like it's like as straight as do you like know what i like, like about do you know what i like about that there's 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 options you too. like there's options you I mean, like you can take a, you, you can take a, a driver you yeah. can take a driver and honestly like a big driver can hit that green honestly like a big driver can hit that hit that green with mm. the right wind etc or you can take an iron and lay up and take a pitching wedge but the, the task that it's asking is, can you hit the fairway with, with your tee shots? Mm. And it, it, is, it is a test. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I really like it. By the time you get to that green, it's a very narrow green. You have to have got far enough up that you can hit a, a it's lofted a, It's a test that there. all three of us failed today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, f- I, half, fell, I half, failed straight off the tee. Half, half spectac- well, all th- I think all three of us failed off the tee quite spectacularly. Because uh, not as spectacular as me. It is a worrying <laughs> shot though when you when you get there on the tee box and you're like, shit, I've got to find something that's not gonna like go left or right. Yeah. So uh, th- this I think this is a good way also to, to to like round out our chat, guys. But um, you can hear we've got a there's a lot of debate around you know which holes we like and don't like at Adam Doney. But I think one of the things that also makes the course enjoyable is that almost every single hole on the course. They they have uh, lateral hazards down pretty much the left and the right hand sides of the holes. So 
yes, you play through this beautiful coastal forest on the back nine. The whole thing is is basically marked as lateral. So it's a great way to like improve pace of play. Look, we did find quite a lot of our balls today that went into those forests. You know, the the ones you don't find, you 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 know, you take your lateral drop and you move on. You know, you're not reloading. Um, it's the same on the front nine, even the grassland. Um, it, it it just gosh, like it, like I I wish more courses would kind of look at the way they do their penalty areas um, in in that way because it makes it makes your your round more enjoyable it, it's a great for pace of play um it's it's yeah like it it's a it's a it's one of the standout it's one of the features of Donny that that you don't see that much at a lot of other uh, courses that have a lot of like you know bush and like you know those types of areas so um guys we've we've spoken a lot about this this uh, sanctuary of golf um I'm going to I'm going to pass it around. Uh oh, did did, did you want to give a shout out to like the hole you, you 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 don't like on the back nine, sorry. Is there uh, one that jumps out to you in particular? Mm, nothing that jumps out, but no. I ju- I just did want to quickly shout out to Terence to do some drone work on the on the back nine. So so that'll come out, but I just wanted to shout out uh when I was on holiday we were uh, on the wild coast. My brother-in-law had flown his drone now for the first time ever and he was like flying it and he was like check it check it the the sea and the rest of it look look at the dolphins out there like flew it back then flew it back out to the dolphins again then his thing started beeping so he said no no no, push go home the go home button and it just started like flying out to sea no and then it became like one of those black box what do they call it black box moments like he's like oh my word no this thing's going out to sea like abort abort (laughs) like how do i get this thing back then like everyone just saw this car crash starting to happen. He's like, "Oh my word! I don't know what to do here." Anyway, the thing just started going out to sea. <coughs> End of transmission. Dropped. His drone dropped in the middle of the ocean. Gone. On the never, dolphins. Never found again. Never to be seen again. Listering. <laughs> so, super awkward uh, beginning to the holiday where everyone was like trying not to laugh. Everyone is so excited about having a drone on their holiday. <laughs> yeah, the drone was sick for the. For the seven, minutes, the seven minutes, added, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, 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 what happens a lot is that guys fly out to like see dolphins, and then they like they don't realize that like while they were going out to the dolphins, the, like the wind was behind them. No, the wind was pumping. Yeah. We so, <laughs> so they're like, oh, I got out to these dolphins so quickly, and then they turn their drone around, and the drone's like, it's a bit like our golf cart today, half. It's like like we had like ladies walking past us on our golf cart today. The things in like like sl- <laughs> slow mo. Um, uh, yeah, I know that we had a very slow golf cart, but um, yeah, jeez, that sucks. Uh, lose, like having having uh, having seen a few drones crash in my time, like I, I feel I feel the pain, especially when it's like at the start of the holiday, and you also never get that footage back, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you're so never going to see that footage so of those dolphins. It's like I was like, well, you can find it because you can look at the footage. It's like, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, no, that thing, that thing, she gone. Um, Guys, uh, this has been a really fun chat, and uh, yes, it was such a lucky day today. Um, thank you, guys. Really enjoyed it. Um, I'd, I'd, I'm not going to actually shout out like a bad hole on that back nine. Like I know people will have a go at the at the twelfth, uh, ten, eleven, twelfth hole. The twelfth hole is like uh, side note. Hoff, tell us the side note about the twelfth hole, the very uphill par three. It was the most uh, hole, most hole in ones in KZN allegedly, for a while. Allegedly, I don't, yeah. I don't know how true that is. Yeah. But for what was it, Jock? Like ten years or fifteen yeah. years or something. This is the story we were told that it was the most, uh, the most hole in ones in South Africa, because the it's so far uphill. You can't see you the can't bottom see of the flag. Yeah. If it's a, if it's a back flag, especially you, you can't see you the flag. See you the can't flag. see the flag at all. So allegedly, in order to get a better tip, the caddies would go up there, and if the ball was in the realm. They would put it Kick into the it hole, in. start celebrating <laughs> like crazy, and and apparently that's the reason why it was the most hole in, most hole in ones in, in South so Africa. Sick. So if you've got a hole in one there, check yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not real. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if the, like, like getting a hole in one at some BT, it's not real. <laughs> I wonder if like the insurance companies like got onto the oaks, you know, like. Um, well, I wonder if that's true first. So if there's anyone out there that that knows the story, that's yeah, that can uh, I think verify it. But it, but it, I mean, it's it's, it's feels it's, feels legit. It's a lacquer story. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I just want to say I thought about it today on the golf course. That hole, hundred percent better than that. Uh, the 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 big downhill par three at Cotswold Downs. So 
Um, that hollow ladder. Just throwing that out there. Both of them. Both of them better than, than your your guys' big downhill par three. Look, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with. Uh, la- I think ladder's better. I think the the par the uh, par three at Cotswolds is a bit gimmicky. I think ladder's a better par three. I I, I was going to say my worst hole on the back nine at Amdoni is that uphill par three. Yeah, no, I, it is. I, I don't I don't like that hole it, at all. It is. It it it. it and it, my favorite hole is the seventeenth by by quite a, quite a distance just because of the. Because of the tiger, the, the tiger that they saw there. It's a good old that's that too. But the forest yeah. with that like old tree falling yeah, into yeah. the fairway, it's so it's a bloody tough hole. It's Tight such a and long. Yeah, yeah. And I, and, well, I was, guys, and I was robbed on that hole by De Villiers. Guys, this has been a this has been a really really good chat. Uh, thank you for today. Uh, thank you to everyone who um, has been involved in the Mdoni Park Trust over the years. Uh, it is. Such a golf sanctuary for, for people to come to. Um, if you are in KZN and you're organizing a golf tour, uh, sorry, if, I mean, if you're from outside of KZN and you're organizing a golf tour down to uh, the south coast of KZN, you absolutely have to put Mdoni on your list. Um, 100% it, it may it, it, it may not, uh, as we said in the beginning, uh, you know, there's, there's different levels of um, conditioning that you can expect at courses. You do not come to Mdoni for conditioning. Um, you come for the location, for the experience, uh, and for the course layout. And uh, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And um, yeah, uh, look at some of the accommodation options as well, because it's also a great base to book a golf tour um, in this area. So, gents, with that, we need to get some meat on the bra. Um, it's looking like a bit sad. We need to get some wood on there. Hoff, over and out, boys. Lekka lekka. Shot tea.